G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well it's early Friday morning here in Australia so the weekend is sort of upon us and what I'm looking for is are we going to see that traditional kind of weekend retracement. I'm sure at some stage there will be and look we have been coming down for already a week and we uh, yeah for me as I said yesterday I'm somewhat suspicious that there might be a bit of a flash crash coming and it might happen this weekend. Look, it might not. We could kind of range around for quite some time. And I'll show you a chart that makes me think maybe there's some more uh, bearish side to March. All right. But again, for me, I'm looking for maybe a flash crash. And again, it's just going to be a wick on the charts, particularly on the BTC chart that comes down to maybe even into 38, 39,000. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I think any kind of dip is going to be fairly aggressively bought up. But I do think that we're going to see a, a typical weekend retracement. It, that's generally what happens most weekends. It can start anywhere from sort of Thursday night. Now we're talking sort of American times. So that's sort of, you know, right about now, right through until sort of, you know, late Sunday night or more early uh, Monday morning. And then by the time the markets start up Monday morning over in the States, everything else, it generally corrects itself. So we're at 48,000 now. I am pretty much expecting to see Bitcoin drop back down into the 44, $45,000 range. And look, even again, maybe see a candle close down around the kind of 42, $43,000 mark. And as I've said before, that $42,000 mark is where I'd definitely buy some more Bitcoin. If it gets down to sort of 43 point two thousand dollars and doesn't quite get down to my targets and i don't buy any then i'm not really too worried but that's the point where i'm kind of happy to buy somewhere around the forty two thousand dollar mark definitely anything under forty two thousand i'm more than happy to buy and for ethereum it's around about twelve hundred dollars now again no guarantees it gets down there we'll just have to wait and see but we can see we're still staying nicely above that 1.5 trillion dollar mark now, even though these targets that I've spoke about, I guess, could be considered a little bit bearish, I am bullish in the sort of midterm. And look, the, the long term, I'm definitely bullish on cryptos. But as I've said before, I do think we're going to have another bear market at some stage. And I don't think it's coming till sort of September through to March next year is sometime when we'll see it. But again, I could be wrong. We've spoke about the super cycle before, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, you know, I play it by ear and it changes on a day to day basis all dependent on what the market's doing because I don't control it and I can't predict it and read it exactly but I can sort of read it what I would like to think reasonably well and that will give me my key indications and again it's just my time in the space which makes me think we might be having a weekend correction and we could see a pretty drastic wick come down into the high 30s now it might not even happen this weekend we could just range around and it might be another weekend but i just get a, a feeling that there's going to be a shakeout coming in the next couple of weeks at least before bitcoin finally makes its next leg up but again i've been wrong before could be wrong again so moving on all right btc dominance still under 60 percent eth dominance still around that 11 percent and gas prices god this is the cheapest we've seen in a while 75 so you know if you're trying to do any transactions on ethereum at the moment uh now wouldn't be too bad uh a spot gas wise considering how it's been in the past not to say it can't get any cheaper though all right what's really moved in the top 100 in the last 24 hours what's pumped all right chili so as we said, they're looking at moving into the uh, American markets. I spoke about that, I think it was yesterday. If it wasn't yesterday, it was the day before, but I'm pretty sure it was yesterday. Hedera Hashgraph has been on an absolute tear at the moment. So they're doing well. Decentraland, so anything to do with NFTs and things like that at the moment is doing quite well. Stacks doing quite well. I am sort of regretting selling out my position in Stacks, but Look, it is what it is. I, I made some pretty good gains on it and I may look to get back in uh, at some stage. Uniswap and look, Engine Coin, of course, that is just doing extremely well with all that NFT news. So congratulations to anyone who's holding uh, Engine. But we can see, look, there, there's some really nice greens in there. But really, the double digit sort of stuff and most of it's kind of low double digits. There's only a couple of, you know, what we consider really good double digit movers. So the market is still trending sideways a little bit. There's coins that are pumping, 
but look for these coins that have pumped to have some retracements in the next week or so as well. That's generally the way it goes. All right, what hasn't performed so well in the last you know, 24 hours in the top 100 at least? All right, so there we go. This is one that was pumping for a while. And as I said, expect them to have pullbacks over the last seven days. It's down 30% and down 14% in the last 24 hours. That's not to say this can't turn around tomorrow or in the next hour or so and then start to go up again. But you can't just keep you know, going up existentially without there being retracements. And that's what's happened to Phantom because they went up like well over 100% for a while there. So now they have pulled back. All right, same with Cosmos. Had a bit of a pump. So now it's having a bit of a pullback. NEM, same thing. Rware, so we can see a number of coins. These are double-digit retracements. But look, if you've lost, let's round it down to 10% and round this down to 30%. So if you've lost 10%, but you're still up 30% for the last seven days, you're not too worried. Would it be nice if you sold before that? Absolutely. And if you can read the market that well, then congratulations to you. And please send me some tips because I'm not able to read the markets that well. Same with Matic. There we go. It's still up, but now we can see there's some sideways traveling motion here. And look, we might even see a pullback because Matic did so well. But again, there's no guarantees in life. We'll just have to wait and see. But again, these are all kind of low double digit, you know, kind of retracements. And all you have to do is generally jump next door to it and you can see you're still up and you're still doing fairly well. So a bit of sideways movement and you can really see that here in the markets at the moment. Things are kind of chopping and changing. It's an indecisive market at the moment in general. All right, let's go over here. Have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So I reckon we can get rid of this line now because it really is completely null and void. But we can see we're in that downtrend and then we have bounce. But as I spoke um, this is a few days ago now it could be a bit of a dead cat bounce and really this was almost a dead cat bounce here bang people were probably thinking yep it's going higher now nah, we rolled over and now this could still be a dead cat bounce as well we pumped up no we went lower we went a little bit higher no nah, we've got lower again and it is possible particularly now that the weekend is coming that this rolls over and comes down much lower again i wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see a wick somewhere down to around about here over the next few days that wouldn't surprise me at all but really this is kind of the mark where i'll be surprised if we see a candle close down there but not impossible and again if we did get into the forty-two thousand dollar mark if i was lucky enough to kind of time it i would be buying some and likewise ethereum if it gets down to around the twelve hundred dollar mark i'll buy some i won't be going all out just in case it goes lower but i definitely will be looking to make a buy all right now we go over where's the one here all right, Bitcoin correlation with S&P 500 at five month high. Is this bearish for Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin and traditional finance mark, financial markets have been highly correlated over the last couple of months. This was clearly displayed over the last couple of weeks where the cryptocurrency uh, followed stocks closely. I'm not so sure about that, not closely, but there's definitely still a correlation. Let's go back to here. What happened? All right, 21st of Feb, we're at a high, then we've rolled over, pumped up, and it looks like we might roll over again. All right, what's happening on the S&P 500? Hit a high, rolled over, pumped up, dropped off, pumped up, and it's rolling over again. So these are pretty correlated. They're not all that far off. Now, it's not identical. It's just similar. There is a correlation. It's not that they're identical. But again, hit a high, rolled over pumped back up rolled over hit a high rolled over pumped back up rolled over pumped back up and again now it is rolling over again so that correlation is still still there you know whether you call it high or just you know a low correlation you know potato potato really it depends on you know how you want to call it but there is an absolute correlation there and so really whatever's going to happen in this uh, traditional market is going to have at least an effect on the cryptocurrency markets. It's not going to be exactly the same. Uh, it's not going to be timed exactly the same. It's just going to have a correlation. So again, S&P 500, keep an eye on that. The Dixie, see how the dollar's doing. If the dollar starts to do well, uh, assets generally fall off. And then if the dollar continues to fall off, then the assets do well. It's just the way it's worked uh, in previous history. Will it continue like that forever? 
who knows we'll have to wait and see all right so this was very interesting and it's all to do with this nft space it's really going off right now uh and i'm not skeptical of nfts in general but just of where it is at the moment it's really kind of euphoric and i think the prices that people are paying for nfts are going to come down significantly before they ever start to make their way back up again and particularly there's a lot of you know what i would call not great i don't want to say crappy but not great nfts you know there's youtube stars and you know all sorts of people just putting out random stuff and look i'm not i can't you know put my hand on my heart and say 100 percent they're crap and they're never going to be worth anything they're only going to go down but my gut feeling is a lot of them that's exactly what's going to happen these nfts aren't going to be worth much there is nfts that i think will have legitimate value and be like normal artwork but i'm just i'm skeptical of some of them now here's something that i think is a little bit sad uh but good in the, in the same way and so i'll read on so a group of crypto components burned an original banksy morons print and turned it into an nft so i, I, I i'm all for nfts i, I like it I just don't know enough about art to really get into it and as i said yesterday i'm more interested in investing in the platforms that they're going to be on than the nfts themselves i'd need to you know do a whole lot more research about art but what i find sad about this and good at the same time so let's start with the sad is that they burnt an original piece of art like a piece of art that was painted or, or whatever it was they took a digital photo of it and then burnt the original so now the only way you can see this art is through the digital version so again i, I kind of like it and i, I kind of don't like it as well i think you know let's not burn any real pieces of art like literally burn them like they did let's just get nft art made but anyway it is what it is let's go on and read so original artwork crafted by the uh pseudonymous england-based street artist and political activist banksy has been burned in order to turn the art into a non-fungible token the screen print was one of only 500 made so their screen print sorry not a painting and was authenticated by banksy's verification company pest control the burning was a symbolic message of turning the rare piece of physical artwork into a non-fungible digital collector's item so again I, I like it i like where the nft space is going and things like that but you know burning real pieces of art uh, yeah i don't know I'm in, I'm in two minds about that again i like it and i don't like it all right moving on so polka dot futures market flippens litecoin as its open interest hits 573 million polka dot raced past litecoin to become the fourth largest futures market as it open as its open interest reached 573 million dollars this week so i really like polka dot love what it's all about built myself a position in it not a large position because i'm just waiting to see excuse me you know will polka dot last and where's its price going to be in the next bear market ethereum is still the leader in the space so i have my position in ethereum uh, and again i've built myself a position in adam i've built myself a position in polka dot i've built myself a position in cardano and i'm just gonna you know before i kind of go too crazy into any one thing although i have put a whole lot more into ethereum we're just waiting to see what happens it's too early to know you know cardano is still rolling out smart contracts and everything so how could you throw all your money into it ethereum you know what i mean likewise still you know getting uh eth 2.0 rolled out so how could you throw all your money into it so for me i'm a bit uh, like that little old lady method i put a bits a few bits and pieces into a lot of things and i only really need one of them to do really well uh, and then i've made my money but if i get a couple of them to do really well well then you know then i've done really well but the thing with a cryptocurrency bull market is a lot of things will generally do well but it's about timing it getting in at the right time getting in at the right time and then you know what do you do with those profits where do you take those profits do you just put them all into bitcoin uh, and accept the downturn that's going to come or do you put it into fiat cash which is you know not doing so well and and that's the really it is the million dollar question isn't it you know what do you do do you simply just buy and hold throughout the bear market because what happens if you get into polka dot and i'm not throwing shade on polka dot i love polka dot but you get into polka dot now and what's polka dot's price what do we got 
Let's go back over here. What is Polkadot trading at? So it's trading at $30. You get into Polkadot, it goes all the way to $70. And then in the next bear market, it goes back down to, let's say, $11. And I'm not saying that's what it's going to do, but that's really going to hurt. You're going to have bought at $35. You're going to have seen it get to $70. You're going to have doubled your money. And then you're going to see it come back to like $11, which is basically a third of the price of what you bought it at. So, yeah, you just you need to make up your own plan. But I think, you know, that would really hurt. Hence why I'm not chucking, you know, everything I have into Polkadot, even though I really like Polkadot. All right, a dark horse in the Ethereum scaling wars. So Chainlink's oracles find fertile ground on XDAI. I've read a lot about XDAI. I, I like XDAI. I just haven't had a chance to buy any. Uh, and there, there is some perceived issues with it and that it's fairly centralized and you know everyone really wants this decentralized stuff so Chainlink is rolling out support for XDAI a layer 2 sidechain whose perceived centralization hasn't stopped major DAP players from moving to it and again there's a, there's a lot of hype uh, around XDAI um, but yeah I guess people are a little bit worried about how centralized it is but look everything starts centralized really that's just the way it is and you've got to wait uh Time, you know, for time for it to be, you know, bought up and become less decentralized. So, yeah, Chainlink hooking up with them though, very, very interesting. So, anyone who's an XDI, congratulations to you. All right. So, now we've got some bad news. So, the first major rug pull on Binance Smart Chain, over 30 million drained. So, this is a bit of a worry. But this, I find this absolutely hilarious. In any case, hours ago, the community was shocked can't believe it they were shocked were they earlier today when news broke out that one of the newer protocols meerkat for crying out loud you've got to be kidding me meerkat finance was drained all these people putting money into meme sort of coins you know meerkat finance if that is literally just named after the animal meerkat then yeah what were you expecting yeah Ladies and gentlemen, please be careful. I wouldn't be putting anything into Meerkat Finance. And unless, you know, that was, there's something behind the Meerkat uh, part other than it's just kind of a meme coin finance. Yeah, I wouldn't have put any money into it. Meerkat Finance is a yield farming protocol that runs on Binance Smart Chain. And a few hours ago, the team revealed that it was hacked and drained by 73,000 BNB and $13 million worth of BUSD. The total amounts... The total number amounts to roughly over 30 million at the time of this writing. This is the worry about blockchain in general, that it's still fairly new, and particularly these newer product, project, projects that come out. You know, you have to be very, very careful. And I mean, I've got some more bad news, and it's also part of the Binance uh, smart chain sort of platform. It's related to it anyway. And again, I'm not throwing shade on Binance in any way, shape or form, but these are some of the things we need to worry about. All right, so the security committee for Carver Labs. Now, I owned Carver Labs. I, I sold it because uh, I just thought it was at a, a good price and I am looking to get back in, but it seems like it might have been a pretty good time to sell. The company behind a new uh, generation DeFi platform has, halt, has halted the chain to address an inflation bug that over-distributes yield farming rewards to its latest release, uh, in its latest release. So not so bad for the people involved if you're getting the free coins, but not so great for the chain itself if that's something that's happening. Uh, to patch the bug and restart the Carver chain, the development team are asking validators to revert to an earlier version of the software, i.e. Carver 4, before updating to the new Carver 6 version in roughly 12 hours. Carver 5, the software version containing the bug, was released this week, shortly before the bug was discovered. The Platform Safety Committee shut down the Carver 5 chain at block 459. Carver Labs is planning to replay uh, the state and determine the source of the error. User funds are not affected. The fix is currently being worked on. We'll update shortly a Carver Labs tweet reads. So again, not too great. I think this is part of the Cosmos uh, uh, blockchain, uh, and I think BNB is also hooked up with Cosmos uh, at the same time. So a little bit of a worry. Uh, I still like Carver and everything that uh, they have done so far. But again, you know, we're not going to know just how these things work until they are fully rolled out. We're at the final stage. 
And look, again, just because you have a bug doesn't mean it's all over, but it is going to be a setback. So that's a bit of a concern. All right, uh, where were we here? So, Ripple's Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson file motions to dismiss SEC lawsuit. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse and co-founder Chris Larson have recent, recently appealed to Judge Annalisa Torres filing two separate motions to dismiss the US SEC's amended complaint against Ripple and its uh, executives. You know, this isn't really overly big news. They were always going to do it, and they're going to try to do this several times. But at the moment, it just doesn't seem like uh, this is going to go away, and it's really going to affect uh, anyone involved in XRP. I've been a huge fan of XRP uh, since back in 2017. Uh, there's been a lot of fud about it. And, you know, there's upsides to XRP, there's downsides to it, you know, not really all that decentralized. Uh, and, you know, Ripple Labs holds almost 50% of all the tokens. But look, I'll give it, I'll give this to it. It was super fast and it was super cheap. So, you know, <laughs> Take what you want from it, but I just don't think this is going away. And that's why I sold most of my XRP. And look, I sold at a bit of a loss. I still have some. I've still got skin in the game. And should this be cleared uh, at some at some stage, then I'll absolutely buy in. And will I have likely lost money? Yep. That's just the way it is. But I sold at a better price than what it is now. So I would have only lost more. Uh, and the money that I've taken from... Uh, my XRP, even though I lost some, what I put it into has easily made up those uh, losses and some, whereas if I was simply sitting in uh, XRP and staying there, I would have just continued to lose. So, you know, you got to make your own mind up about you what you want to do. But for me, until Ripple gets it sorted, I just can't, yeah, stay heavily invested in XRP anyway. I've got a small position. All right, let's go over here. So Dallas Mavericks now accept accepting Dogecoin as payment. So Mark Cuban has said that almost no one has paid the Mavericks in Bitcoin. So will anyone pay in Dogecoin? I think people will pay in Dogecoin, but Bitcoin, no. I, I just can't see Bitcoin becoming like a currency that's traded like that anytime soon. There's so much more upside. It, it won't be used uh, like that. I spoke about an article yesterday that's saying it'd be the... Uh, I think Citibank was saying it could be the international trade uh, currency. No, it won't. Not while it's still fluctuating so much. It'll have to get to a point where it's you know sort of stable, whatever that is. So we need worldwide adoption before people are going to do that. Because again, you pay $100 worth of Bitcoin today to someone to pay a bill, and in four years' time, it's suddenly worth $10,000. That's the reason no one's going to do it. Dogecoin, uh, you know, there's so many Dogecoin out there and they're cheap. At the moment, or well, cheap in relative terms, whether it's cheap for Dogecoin or not, you make your own decision. But I think people will likely pay in Dogecoin because they can buy so much more of it nice and cheap. Bitcoin, just don't see it happening. All right, so now here's another reason why I think we're likely in for a little bit more pain. And look, it might even last since this entire month. I am thinking March will likely end up being a bullish month, but it could be bearish. And here's why. Here is a monthly return on Bitcoin going all the way back since 2011. We're currently in the month of March. Since 2011 bearish, 2012 bearish, 2014 bearish, 2015 bearish, 2016 bearish, 2017 bearish, 2018 bearish, 2020 bearish. There, there has been a couple of green months, but geez, it has... a. a pretty good history of being bearish now february generally hasn't been sort of uh too bearish and the last part of february leading into march was bearish overall the month was still green though but it may have just started kind of early and it may kind of stretch out into the entire month of march we'll have to wait and see but the good thing is then we go to april april is generally uh, a green month so again we'll have to wait and see i wouldn't be surprised if March still turned out to be a green month, it just wasn't, you know, a great green month. It was a very low, again, something like this maybe, because uh, this was so, you know, the last, I mean, we're only into the fifth, but the last 
sort of you know at least a week or so of February, we've definitely seen a bit of a downtrend and again we go back to here we can go back to since the 21st of february so again the last week of it has just been bearish so the month of february still finished high so again because it started here the first of feb it was at thirty two thousand dollars thereabouts and it finished at fifty eight thousand dollars before it started to turn uh, to the downside so the end of february which was here finished at forty five thousand thereabouts but that's up from you know again thirty two thousand so maybe we see some more downside we'll have to wait and see but also fear and greed index it's just getting really really high again yesterday we we're at 78 now we're at 84 people are just going to get super bullish that's what makes me think we're going to have a flash crash this quickly flips probably way over to here and then comes back to about here before we start to make our way up could be completely wrong who knows time will tell either way i'm not making any drastic moves at the moment i'm dollar cost averaging into some of the altcoins that i like i'm not dollar cost averaging into bitcoin at the moment because i'm really just waiting to see again the price for me to buy into bitcoin at the moment is around about forty-two thousand. the price for me to buy into eth at the moment is around about 1200 now again just thereabouts it doesn't have to be exactly 1200 on the dot and it doesn't have to be exactly 42,000 on the dot really anything kind of under 43,000 is starting to look appealing to me definitely anything under 42,000 for Bitcoin and anything under around about 13 uh, yeah 1300 for uh, ethereum and definitely under 1200 for ethereum that's just where i'm at i'd love to know your thoughts where are you happy to buy at the moment are you happy to buy bitcoin at this price are you happy to buy ethereum at this price are you happy to buy just about anything at this price do you think there is just so much more upside that really trying to you know again you know maybe save a few dollars here and there is even worth it again i've given you my thoughts love to know yours uh leave them down below I do ask one favor if you can just at the very least go down and click that like button I'm really trying to get my videos out there uh, and when you click the like button it helps with the algorithm and for them to get seen if you want to go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell icon that'd be great as well all right stay safe be kind to one another you know there are some gains there to be made so it's not like they're not but it is a little bit hard with an indecisive market beware of the weekend retracement and I'll see you next time